cells that help us retain and create memories. The happy times, the sad ones, the monumental moments that we can all think back and remember. That's a complex, beautiful part of our biology. But what if you woke up every day to a blank slate with no recollection of what happened months, weeks, or even the day before? Kind of like that movie, 50 First Dates. That's what the headlines call the case of 16-year-old Caitlin Little, whose brain resets every night when she goes to sleep. But this isn't a movie. For Caitlin and her family, this is real life. Take a look. It all started with a freak accident. 14-year-old Caitlin Little was at cross-country practice. Some other kids were goofing around, and heads collided. Later, when her mom came to pick her up, Caitlin went to the car and asked her mom how to open the door. They knew then that this was serious. The date, October 12th, 2017. That was a year and a half ago, but to Caitlin, it was just yesterday, literally. Every morning, Caitlin's father wakes her up, telling her the date and basic facts. Today is April 10th, 2019. You got hit in the head while you're doing cross-country practice in Southeast. And then the next day, he has to do it again, and again, and again. That's because Caitlin has a condition that causes her brain to reset every night, wiping out all her memories after the day of the accident, and leaving her with severe memory impairment. <laughs> so to cope, Caitlin and her family put post-it notes all over the house. In the refrigerator, telling her what foods to eat. In the bathroom, reminding her how to brush her teeth. In her bedroom, reminding her not to wear her sister's clothes. Because it gets on her nerves. But after 18 months and little improvement, Caitlin's parents have turned to some experimental therapies, like this hyperbaric oxygen chamber. It feeds oxygen through there, has a little mask, just like a nebulizer. Some researchers believe it increases oxygen to the brain to promote healing. And just a few months ago, they brought Caitlin to a specialized chiropractor. He is doing upper neck adjustments, hoping to get her brain to function the way it used to. While doctors can't yet pinpoint the exact mechanism causing Caitlin's memory loss in a way we can verify, we wanted her and her family to share their story as they're experiencing it in their own words. And Caitlin bravely made the trip to New York. She is backstage. There she is. And we're going to meet her in just a minute. But first, I want to talk to Caitlin's parents, Jennifer and Chris, who are joining us now on the sofa. Thank you for being here and for yes, sharing your family thank you. story. Thank you. Chris, what's it like for you every day, every morning, to have to re-explain the accident to your daughter, Caitlin? I've uh, been the one to wake up all the children every day. Uh, my, well, my wife does practically everything else to get them ready for school. <laughs> so uh, each morning, I go in there to wake her up and try to give her just the information she needs to get started. I let her know roughly what the temperature's gonna be, what the weather's gonna be, and then I let her know she has a journal on her desk or um, table next door, and then she has note, hostess notes that tell her how to find that journal. Um, I tell her that she should read her journal to get caught up, and if she has any questions, come up and see me about 15, 20 minutes, and I'll give her more details that she needs. I try not to overwhelm her with too much. Jennifer, this is a bit of a road journey for you and the family. Yes. Take me back to the first moment that you thought there might be a problem, the first inkling there was an um, issue. That's why I got kind of emotional watching her run. Um, when we picked her up, I picked her up, they said, hey, Caitlin had a head injury. Caitlin has had many injuries, as kids do when they're athletic, and never, ever has said, I'm in pain. I picked her up, and we always do a rating scale of 1 to 10 for our pain, and she's like, Mom, this is a 9, maybe a 10. Mm. Okay, Caitlin doesn't complain, so I knew right away we were in trouble, but I didn't know how much trouble at that point. I was like, well, gosh, you know, you got hit in the head. Can't... We walked to the car, and she just stared at it, and she's like, what do I do? I said, well, we're going to go on home. She's like, no, how do I open the car door? I don't remember how to do that. And at that point, I sort of got her in the car and trying to be real calm. Chris, we have a real issue. When I get home, you know, be ready. We need to talk. Um, we did follow the school protocol. We did all the things they suggested we do for a normal concussion. And in those first two weeks, her memory would erase in less than 10 minutes. She was resetting every 10 minutes. Of, uh, that was all she could hold. And all the doctors were like, oh, it's just, it's just a simple case of a concussion. It will heal itself. And 
we started then the journey of, of waiting for it to heal. So what's the most painful part for you as a mom? I, I, I mean, you were <laughs> remained very emotional even watching the tape. The tape was hard to watch because it, I guess in 18 months, you kind of set aside all your feelings. I'd forgotten that girl you guys saw running. I'd forgotten the um, personality you could see on that face. And um, we're worried. We're scared that her milestones have stopped, that we are just stuck on 24 hours and that's gonna be the rest of our lives is just 24 hours. What's happened to her school, to her friends? School has been um, amazing. Her her principal, her guidance counselor, her teachers, and her intelligence is intact. And that's what's hard for people to believe. She is still very smart and wants to accomplish. She wants to live the rest of her life and, and set goals and achieve them. So her teachers are helping her do that. The human body has an unbelievable ability to recover. Yeah. In ways we can't even imagine. Yeah. And we get better at helping to do that every single day. Yes. So, I'm gonna share with the audience something you already know about what's going on with your daughter. Yes. Right, so far doctors have not been able to figure out why Caitlin can't retain your memories. But I wanna do something. I wanna show you all a little bit about how memory works in the brain. Because memories in the brain are stored almost everywhere. It's not just in one spot, but there's some place that play a bigger role. And, you know, it might be a burger you happen to love, or maybe a baby that you remember, uh, you know, graduations, big most moments in your life. Sometimes it's just a mundane, seemingly mundane issues about being at work, or doing your homework, or, or having fun, right? These are all different memories. And what we think of as a single memory is actually a collection of pieces of memory stored in different parts of the brain. And memory problems like amnesia can be caused by injury or malfunctions. You bang your head, right? And all of a sudden, that really complex process where you can remember things no longer is there. You get amnesia. Now, an anterograde amnesia, and anterograde amnesia is about the fact that you cannot form new memories as well as, as you normally could. They, they seem a little misformed, right? They're not quite what they should be. And so you can remember the information immediately, sort of, but you have problems storing those memories long term. And anterogate amnesia is what Caitlin has. Now, memories before the injury might be spared, but events since the injury may be lost because they were never stored. So Caitlin was diagnosed with traumatic brain injury post-concussion, and this amnesia she had was related to that. And her family has met numerous doctors and specialists to help to get her memory back. Now, unfortunately, Caitlin has not recovered as adequately as you just had witnessed for talking to her parents. But I want to check in with neurologist Dr. Aisha Shozai, who is on the cutting edge of brain science for some insights. And she's joining us now via Zoom. Dr. Shorzai, how common is Caitlin's diagnosis and what's your advice for the family? How common is Caitlin's diagnosis and what's your advice for the family? Hi, Dr. Ross. Um, this case is very, very unique and extremely rare. I mean, you don't get to see anterograde amnesia lasting this long. And just listening to the parents and Caitlin, sorry, my heart goes out for them. I know how difficult it is. You know, our memories are ourselves. It's the stories of ourselves. And when that is affected, uh, you feel very destabilized. And it seems like she has seen a lot of great doctors who've done the normal, the standard diagnostic uh, procedures to find out what was going on. And moving forward, I think the parents have to be very careful and discerning who they contact and who they come across with because there are a lot of people with promises of potential cures that may cost a lot of money and may not be in her best interest. So they need to be very careful about that. And you know, the most important thing is uh, for the mom and dad to know that they are the ones who know her best. They are her best advocates and they have to make sure that they support her and love her. And like you said, you know, the brain is a very susceptible organ, but it's also very forgiving. Dr. Shazai, thank you very, very much. So guys, uh -huh. one thing's clear to me for sure, you're a family. You're closely knit, you're bonded. You've got four children. Caitlin's number two, I think, right, in the list. So you guys can do almost everything together, which means you can support each other. No matter what ailment we're talking about, that almost historically pulled us together. Siblings are all backstage, right? They're hanging out with Caitlin. There they are, supporting her. And even if she takes their clothes, she can now claim she doesn't remember doing it. Most families don't have that excuse. It is a beautiful thing to see a family come together, even if it's around a tragic event. And as I look to what you guys will be doing in the future, that ends up becoming the foundation of it. So when we come back, 
I'd like to meet Caitlin if that's okay. 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 And you all were as well. You got hit in the head while you're doing cross country practice at Southeast. You haven't been in school for a little while. Okay. You've got a journal over on your desk that helps explain things. For more than 18 months, only 600 consecutive days. That is the message Chris Little has used to wake up his daughter, Caitlin, every morning. The incident he just told her about left her with a rare form of amnesia that resets her brain while she sleeps. Caitlin is joining us now with her parents, Jennifer and Chris. Jennifer, thanks for being here. Help us all understand what it's like to wake up every morning with that same message from your father that you've had a head injury and you probably don't remember what happened yesterday. As with most anyone I could imagine, it's disbelief. You, you say, no way, you're joking. You stop pulling my leg. There's no way it could be over a year and a half since October. I mean, it hadn't even been Halloween yet. But then I look around and I'm like, things, things are a lot different. I mean, a lot has changed. And you get a weird feeling inside yourself saying something's something's not right what's changed the most that you've noticed my family has changed a lot not just physically but i can see it emotionally too my sister has become a lot more confident through this all as well as my brother he's grown a lot taller but he's also become more um, confident mature mature yes mature. mature when you woke up this morning in your new york city hotel room <laughs> yes what, what did you think you were doing today what did i think i was doing did you remember that you were coming here no no sir i did not I had no idea when I woke up that I was in New York or where I really was. I did not know I was in a hotel room, which was a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> so you're living your life with these post-it notes and I, this is your journal. And I just uh, noticed says, read me, <laughs> I am your journal. Mm -hmm. And this says, you know, flip me up and read me so that you even have notes to remind you to read it. But what, what is it, what's it like? to have to use these notes to remind yourself of the activities of, of everyday living. It's a lot like reading a book. I mean, since I don't really remember, I can't pull that memory and say, oh yeah, I remember what the clouds look like, or I remember looking at that dog when we were sitting at the restaurant. So I can kind of picture of what it would be like but it's, just, it's not the same as actually remembering anything so when you had your injury and all, all of us sitting here listening to you do start to think it's sort of like that movie that i thought was made believe 50 first dates mm -hmm. does it bother you to be compared to the, the woman in that movie it doesn't bother me to be compared to her i think it helps people understand more because, yeah, she could remember, but she could also point out things that I might not be able to, that are hard to do. Chris, what do you, as you, as you watch your daughter now, she seems like she's obviously very understanding what's going on. Uh, she's very, very smart, and she has a very good grasp on things, and she's handled it way better than probably the rest of us would have. She has a very good attitude. It's been harder than parents. Yes. As much as your daughter. Yes. She tells me that quite often, that we, um, she has it easy, that she sees that we're the ones that are much more emotional, because as she says, she's going to wake up and start over tomorrow, that... The emotions don't build for her like they do for us. Is that right, Caitlin? Mm-hmm. I mean, I really just take it right here, right now. I can't really look forward to what am I going to do tomorrow night for dinner. 
I don't know. If y'all want chicken, maybe, maybe tacos sound good. All I've got to focus on is right now, this is where we are. So here's what I like to do. I can't promise a solution or an answer. This is an incredibly complicated process. You're going through it. Uh, what I do want you to have is hope. So we're reaching out to some doctors who have done research in this area just to be able to collect more to help you. And we'll connect you directly to them. If that's okay, we'll start with that. You'll certainly be the world experts on this when you're done. And hopefully you'll find some paths as well at least to get you to continue to improve more than you have already. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. we appreciate it. Thank you. And